With his tall and muscular stature, Takio Gauda is not our average high school student. However, behind his hard structure lives a heart of gold. He is considered to be a hero for the boys for his courage and chivalry. But only courage can't make a girl fall for him given his hard exterior and scary looks. His case also isn't helped by the fact that his sinfully handsome friend and constant companion Makoto Sonaka attracts girls left and right including the girls that Takeo likes. Quite despairing. But all this is gonna change when Takeo saves a girl named Rinko Yamato from being molested and falls in love with her. He thinks Rinko also likes Makoto so despite wanting his own love story he decided to play Cupid for them. Let's see where this giant Cupid's life takes him. Today is the final day of junior high. Our guy Takeo is feeling the heat on the farewell ceremony when he cries a bunch. Takeo is a former club member and the other members revere him for his good personality and chivalry. He leaves early to confess to a girl that he likes from a long time ago. But he reaches a classroom where the girl is confessing to his friend Sonakawa. Sonakawa, with his handsome face and cold personality, rejects the girl and he leaves with Takeo. Takeo and Suna are the polar opposites in the matter of looks and popularity with girls. Takeo didn't even know how they were even friends despite having nothing in common. Except they live in the same apartment complex and their mothers are long friends. But their story goes a long way back. From kindergarten to elementary and now in junior high, every girl Takeo liked had confessed to Suna and he always rejected them. Takeo was someone who even tried to help catch a shady guy in front of elementary school even without being asked only to get reported by the police. On the train, Suna was a smooth operator but our guy Takeo, despite being chivalric, it's brutally ignored even by an old Chimera woman. Suna alerts Takeo that a shady person is in the train and Takeo, being as brave as ever, nabs the molester, saving an angelic girl. They took the molester to the police to report where that pathetic little bug tried to put the blame on the girl. This made our gallant Takeo angry and he bashed the baboon out of him. But to his bad luck, he got suspended for using violence in front of the police. He was passing his time idly when Suna came to give him notes and laughed at his miserable luck. Takeo's mother told him that a girl named Yamato was here to meet him. Turns out the girl he saved earlier was Yamato Rinki, a high school freshman just like them. Her angelic aura made Takeo have a crush on her. She came with a cheesecake to thank Takeo for saving her. Suna was going out when she stopped him to have cake with him. This made Takeo think that Yamato liked Suna. They enjoyed the cake together and went away. In his room, Takeo found a pink mobile phone which was ringing. He answered and found out that Yamato had left her phone in his house and decided to meet tomorrow. Takeo took Suna with him cause he thought that Yamato liked Suna. Yamato thanked them for bringing her phone and treated them with macarons she had made. Takeo complimented her which caused Yamato to blush. Takeo checked out her expressions and went to the bathroom to cool off his head. He was sad as he couldn't go up front with his feelings. He thought the blushing face Yamato had was for Suna, so he decided to be a real man and support them. He told Yamato to make them something sweet again. She happily agreed and bid them farewell. On their way, Suna praised Yamato saying that she seems nice causing Takeo to think Suna also liked her as he never says anything about nice about girls ever. Yamato suddenly came running and asked Takeo for his email. Takeo was shocked to see her putting so much effort and still misunderstood that she did all this for Suna. He decided to play cheerleader for Suna and Yamato. From a long time, Takeo was used to being attracted to Suna even though he never had the chance to approach his love. Mostly because girls tend to fall for Suna rather than Takeo. He was in his class when he received a good morning message from Yamato. He got all giddy after seeing the message but controlled his overwhelming emotions because he was determined to bring Yamato and Suna together. The whole day he closely I mean very closely inspected Suna to understand his emotions but to no avail. Suna gifted him only yawns of tiredness. But Takeo was resilient in his mission. He kept thinking about what type of girls did Suna like. But he came across a dead end because in a friendship of 10 years, they didn't ever talk about girls. He had no idea what type of girls Suna liked. He just decided to go and ask Suna himself but Suna didn't give him a clear reply. He thought if Yamato falls into the category of girls that Suna liked. Suna, on the other hand, could clearly tell what type of girls Takeo liked. He tends to fall for good and cute girls just like Yamato. Takeo took Suna with himself to get some fresh air. Seeing Suna's nonchalance towards girls, Takeo suspected if he even had a pair. But Suna clearly replied that he would feel tired if he dated girls. It would be just a hassle for him. Takeo told him to refrain from acting all cool in front of girls if he didn't like them because girls always have their heart broken from him. Suna agreed even though he doesn't go out of his way to act differently in front of girls. They all are just superficial if a new day was here when Takeo was sleeping in class. But his sleep soon turned into happiness as he got a message from Yamato. Her baking was complete, and she wanted to meet tomorrow to have the sweets together. Takeo and Suna went to meet Yamato. 
The angel Yamato's baking and Suna went to buy some drinks for them. Tekio told her that Suna is interested in exercise girls and is a very good guy. He told her about his stories from childhood where Takio was always doing something embarrassing like peeing in his pants and how Suna would come as his knight in shining armor, helping him to save his already hampered reputation. Basically, Suna just adopted this big baby Takio. Takio got embarrassed when he realized he had spilled his shameful acts from childhood to Yamato. But the shame didn't last long as Suna came with her drinks. After having the sweets, they bid each other goodbye. But suddenly, a huge pole broke and was falling on Yamato, but Takio saved her by taking the pole's weight on him. Suna safely got Yamato out. Takio thought he could never actually take the lead in such situations, causing him to lack in a girl's eyes, but he didn't mind because Yamato was safe. He was about to leave the pole, but Suna and Yamato came to help him. Seeing his friends helping him cause his willpower to rise, he single-handedly threw the pole away. He had injured himself a little, but Yamato put a bandage on it, which made the Cupid sing in his mind. He was on cloud nine the whole time they were on their way home. At night, Yamato called Takio and asked if he was all right. She told him to come with Suna the next time they will meet as she wants only both of them together this time. Ditsy Takio thought that she was finally ready to ask for advice from Takio to pursue Suna. Ending the night, the hope for our dumb Takio. Takio came to meet Yamato as she had requested. On his way, all he could think about is how he has to be a man, ignoring his feelings for Yamato and uniting Suna and her. Yamato came all decked up nice for him and gave him the heart-shaped cakes she had baked for him. Takio enjoys her sweets and starts talking about how Suna is a considerate and great guy who doesn't have a girlfriend, nor does he have the tendency to cheat. He told Yamato to believe his words as he has known him from his childhood. He thought that he can't confess his own feelings to her, because in the end he is just a chaos-making red ogre, who just makes chaos unlike the good blue ogre. When he looked at Yamato, he saw that she was crying. She said sorry to him and ran away from there. Takio, as ignorant as he is to all her pursuing, didn't get why she was crying. Takio went to Suna's house and asked him what he did to make Yamato cry. Suna told him he didn't do anything. Takio told him that Yamato likes him, but Suna finally told him that the one Yamato likes is not him, but Takio. He told him about the time when he went to cool off his head in the bathroom. At that time, Yamato asked him if Takio had a girlfriend. After confirming that he didn't have one, Yamato became happy and told him that she liked him. Suna told him that he always had bad taste in girls who always used to back talk about him. Nobody would like a girl who back talks about his friend like that. This made Takio realize that all this time Suna was rejecting girls because of him, but he still couldn't believe that Yamato likes him. Suna's mother came to tell them that Yamato is here to see him. Suna tells Takio to hide under the bed, which caused a bit of uproar, but he fit it in. Yamato came in and told Suna that she cried in front of Takio. She told him that Takio always suggest about him, which made her think that he was rejecting her in a roundabout way. Suna asked if she would give up now, but she replied that she can't because she likes him very much. Suna made her say that many times to make sure Takio gets that inside his thick skull. Finally, he asked Takio to get out from under the bed. Yamato confessed that she had liked him since the day they met, and Takio also told her the same, making their love story successful. They were at their usual park eating sweets baked by Yamato. Relationship bliss was clear on both of their faces when Yamato thanks Suna with an extravagant cake to show her gratefulness. She also tried to set him up with a girl, but she didn't need her to spread the love. He just liked seeing Takio happy, which made Takio realize that Suna was really like the blue ogre from their childhood play. Yamato asked about the play and he told her the story of a red ogre who was scary yet wanted to be friends with humans, but for his looks he could make friends. His friend Blue Ogre made a plan to make humans like him which was successful as Red Ogre made a lot of human friends. When the Red Ogre went to search for the Blue Ogre, he saw that he had left for the Red Ogre to stay friends with humans as being with him would drive the humans away. Takio told Suna that he was amazing but Suna said that it was not amazing but normal for him to do so for his friends. This made Takio realize that Suna has been looking after him for a long time. He hugged his dear friend to death after that. Aiko was thinking of Takio and Yamato and what to do with their situation. She had consoled Takio, saying she would talk to Yamato about her worries. On the other hand, Takio was binge reading shujo mangas to understand girls and their feelings more. His friends had managed to collect more stash of mangas for him. Suddenly, a ruckus was heard by Suna, and he went to see what the boys were talking about. Turns out Suna's sister Ega had come to their school. She called him to come over without letting Takio know. She, along with Suna, went to Yamato's school. Aika told her that she knew about Yamato having a secret. She told him that Takio had come to learn about her keeping a secret too, but didn't know how to help her if she herself didn't tell him. This had Yamato in tears, and she finally accepted that she wasn't as pure as Takio thought her to be. She started talking about his nice chest, 
big hands, thick eyebrows, and sexy lips causing Eka to get excited and Suna to get far away from the conversation. She admitted that she wanted to touch him, hold hands, and cuddle with him, but Takio had decided to touch her until she's all grown up. She can't tell about her feelings to Takio because she thinks it will make him disgusted. Aika reassures her that Takio loves her. He's a strong guy who doesn't back off from small things like that, rather he faces them up front. She told her to be true about her feelings with Takio. Yamato thanked Aika and went running to Takio's house to say what she wanted to. Suma asked Aika how she developed feelings for Takio. She told him that in sixth grade, she was a tall, lanky kid causing boys to tease her and compare her to the ugly statue in the school. This had taken its toll on the young girl's confidence. But Takio, as always the gentleman, had compared her with a beautiful flower, which made her like him, but she couldn't pursue him because he was in junior high. They met Takio trying to rescue a kitten on their way and told him that Yamato was going to his house to talk to him. Hearing this, Takio activated his Super Saiyan mode and ran like his pants were on fire. Seeing him so loving towards her girlfriend made Aika jealous, but she was happy as Takio was happy. Takio catched up to Yamato in time and asked her to say what was in her mind as he was ready to oblige. She talked about her desire to hold hands and snuggle. Takio got ready to hold hands even if it turned out to be a bit awkward yet wholesome. They took a walk like that in the park. Yamato told him that she had lied about asking about him in the station. Instead, she had gone to his school to ask about him and had deliberately left her phone in his house. Takeo didn't mind, rather he thought that she had gone through a lot of hurdles for him. Yamato was crying out of happiness. Takeo promised to never make her cry anymore, but those were tears of happiness for him. Aika was going back now that she had seen Takeo happy. Yamato and Aika both saw shooting stars and Yamato messaged Takeo about her wish to be with him forever. Takeo had decided to make her the happiest woman alive, so he went to Suna and asked him to practice kissing with him. Suna told him to do it with a pillow, but the pillow had already been martyred, so Takeo plastered his lips with foil paper and kissed the life out of poor Suna. Poor guy had to take the brunt of their deep love. The usual routine of girls fawning over Suna and boys idolizing Takeo in the train was seen as they left the train together. Takeo's life was going smoothly now that he had a girlfriend as cute as Yamato. He felt the spring breeze coming and was lost in the beautiful flowers blooming. He was in his usual helping spirit. But as always, his service went unnoticed and Suna got all the unsolicited appraisal. But nothing about Takeo went unnoticed by Yamato as she praised him for being so strong. They had their usual picnic in the park where Yamato had made Japanese sweets for them. Takeo and Yamato talked about the weather and how they liked winter, fall, and spring. Suna told them that he could see them have this conversation even if they were old and wrinkly. This caused Yamato and Takeo to blush. Yamato wanted to click a couple picture with him as she wanted to use that as her profile photo. She clicked the picture with Takeo being all matcher for his girl. Yamato had a phone call and she told her friends that she was with her boyfriend. This made Takeo happy over the moon. Yamato's friends wanted to meet her boyfriend at the singles meet. Yamato requested Takeo to bring his single friends to the meet. Having guy friends is not a problem for Takeo as he is very famous with guys. His friends were happy to know that Takeo had a girlfriend and got ready to go in the singles meet with him. He forced Suma to go with him in the meeting, telling him that Yamato's friends must be as nice as her. But Suna told him that not all nice people have friends as nice as they are. At the meet, Yamato introduced Takeo as her boyfriend, which didn't harness nice reactions from her friends. Even though Takeo did his best to be a gentleman and help them in any way he could find, they still found him weird and fond over Suna who wasn't talking. Everybody sat down and talked for a while when two of Yamato's friends got up to use the washroom. As they were late on returning, Yamato decided to go watch for them. Takeo also tagged along with her to help. Takeo and Yamato heard them talking trash about Takeo how Takeo was like a big gorilla and weird. They didn't get why Yamato even liked Takeo. Yamato shouted at them that Takeo was super cool and ran away from there. Takeo went after her and stopped her. She was crying and apologizing to Takeo as her friends were saying mean things about him, which must have caused his feelings to get hurt. But he told her that his feelings were fine. He remembered the thing that Suna had said to him earlier and told her that it's normal for some people to be like that. Only thing that matters to him is how they were together and he didn't want her to cry more on his behalf. Yamato stopped crying and told him she must have not clearly explained to her friends about how cool he was. She will properly tell their friends about his awesomeness. They went back to the restaurant only to see that a fire had started out. All of them were out except those two back bitching friends of Yamato. Takeo didn't think twice and went into the fire to save them. He successfully saved one of them and went back again to save bitch number two. He took the piles that were about to fall on the girl and took it upon him. He told her to run away, causing him to get stuck under heavy piles. He was about to faint when Asuna called him. 
Suna told him that Yamato was trying to jump in the fire for him and his own life would be boring without Takio, so he told him to come as fast as he could. This fired up the already on fire Takio, and he leaped out of the piles, jumped from the window like Tarzan. Yamato's friends realized that Takio was a cool and nice guy. Takio got a nice tan out of all that and got a message from Yamato saying that her friends think that he is very cool just like her and thanked him. This ended Takio's day on a great note. Takio was on his way to school in the train when he saw some hooligans hogging up seats in the train. He went to them, and only his sharp looks were enough for them to run away. He saw Yamato on the train and went to her. Yamato learned that he always takes this train to school and wanted to be in the same train with him, even if she gets late. At school, the classes had already started and Suna looked out for Takio as he was still absent. A friend of theirs entered the class at that time and sent everyone a video of Takio. The train door was about to close when Takio held them for Yamato, and she successfully got out but Takio remained inside. His heroic behavior got him praises from the guys whereas the girls were talking about his cute girlfriend. Suna's sister was seen outside their apartment complex. Takio and Suna were on their way to park when a small boy suddenly fell into the river. Takio jumped in without any thought and saved the kid, but as always his good doings were ignored but Takio didn't care. He had to go to Yamato as she was waiting for him. He didn't bother changing and went to her in his drenched clothes. Suna told her how Takio had saved a nearly drowned child. Suna gave him his gym clothes to change into and as usual, they enjoyed her baking. Takio acted like a chad when he picked out a bug from Yamato's hair causing her to blush red. After a while, Suna went home giving them some alone time together. Takio thought Yamato was nervous being alone with him so he promised to not to touch a single hair on her until she was all grown up. Yamato was seen to be concerned about something but she didn't say anything to Takio. At home, Suna's sister welcomed him and asked if Tekio was there with him. Suma told her that Tekio had a girlfriend now and he was with his girlfriend causing his sister to cry and Suna got to know that his sister also has feelings for Tekio. She was hell-bent on finding out who the girl was dating Tekio. She asked Suma if Tekio was as ditzy and lame as ever. She suspected the girl was playing with Tekio so she wanted to see her intentions herself. Next day, she followed them through GPS and got to see Tekio's cute girlfriend. She asked Yamada what she liked about Tekio. Yamato told her that she just likes him for him. The Sundir sister was keeping an eye on Yamato. Yamato invited her for sweets. They all sat together and Takio started praising Yamato to her. They taste the sweets, but it turns out to be salty. The previous night, Yamato was in a trance when she had put salt instead of sugar. But Takio didn't care and wanted to eat all the salty snacks made by her. This called for a blushing moment for them. The big sister asked Takio what he likes about Yamato. Takio told her that he likes her pure heart but this didn't remove the shadow of concern from Yamato's face. After bidding them farewell, Suna's sister told him that Yamato has a secret. She was hiding something from Takio. Takio walked her home. She wanted to say something to him, but at the end, she decided to not say anything and went inside. Takio thought that he was dense and should do something to learn what was going on in Yamato's mind. Suna's sister Eika saw him reading the girl's magazine. Takio told him about his concern and Eika reassured him saying that she will ask Yamato what was going on in her mind. Takio was relieved as he wanted Yamato to be out of knots. Takio and Yamato's love story was going on in full force when two men clad in judo uniforms suddenly came in front of their way. Takio was prepared to protect Yamato from attackers, but the two men turned out to be second-year boys from his school. They bowed in front of him and asked his help. Takio agreed without learning what type of help they were asking for. They asked him to join the judo club for this month only because they had a judo match with a rival school. They had to win this time to go to the nationals and their champion was injured causing them to ask help from him. Takio being the ever gentleman got the gist of what they were trying to say and agreed to help. Yamato asked about him doing judo. He said that he used to do judo in junior high and competed in nationals too, but didn't get to do judo in high school because he forgot to join the club. Suno said that Takio had to practice now and they won't be able to meet each other. Takio apologized and Yamato encouraged him to help the judo club to win. He told her to just say the word and he would come to meet her. Next day, Takio practiced hard in judo, remembering Yamato's words. After practice, he found Yamato waiting for him with the onajiri she had made for him. Takio told her not to come there anymore after realizing that it would be unsafe for her to be there so late. Yamato agreed and kept sending his good luck and encouraging messages all the time which fired him up to work hard. Yamato came to Suna's house to give him some extra sweets she had baked thinking about Takio. She expressed her concern that Takio might not like her anymore because he had told her not to come. Suna reassures her that it is her misunderstanding and Takio loves her very much. Yamato got happy after hearing such reassuring words from Suna. She told him that it was her first time having a boyfriend. 
She would feel the rush in her heart every time she was with Taekyo. She loved him very dearly as he was her first love. Suna also confessed his love for Taekyo as him being his first friend. He said that being Taekyo's first is intense. Well, remember the kiss, guys. He knows what he's talking about. Suna told her to wait for Taekyo, but she denied saying she wanted to wait until the last moment. Suna told her to come to the judo match. They saw the stars together and how they all looked like Taekyo to Yamato. Taekyo was practicing hard thinking about Yamato's wishful words to him. He was missing Yamato as it was his first time being so distant with Yamato for so long. He wanted to hear her voice. They talked for a while on the call which recharged Taekyo for the match. The day of the match was here. Taekyo took Yamato to the front so that she could cheer and watch him on. The champion rival and Taekyo's old acquaintance came and he introduced him to his girlfriend. The gorilla-looking guy told him that he was now weak as he had been fooling around with his girlfriend all this time. This made Yamato conscious but Taekyo told her to sit in front to watch him. The match was getting quite intense when it was finally Taekyo's time to fight the gorilla. He was sure of his victory as he thought Taekyo had become all weak after spending time with his girlfriend. But he didn't know that being with Yamato gave him extra zeal and power. He trash-bagged the gorilla to where he belonged and won the match. Yamato was in nine clouds watching Taekyo win. They met with each other after the match and stargazed together. This episode starts with Taekyo dreaming about a blast from the past where a kid Suna was seen in the park swinging alone. Taekyo saw him and went there. He swung so hard that he fell on the ground. He got up and told Suna that he was supposed to swing like that. To which Suna didn't necessarily agree upon, but he laughed at his antics. Taekyo woke up and remembered that Suna looked as cool as always even in the swing. Taekyo and Suna were on their way to meet Yamato, but Suna told him that he was going home as he had something important to do. Taekyo told him that Yamato had made enough snacks for him, but Suna decided to just go home. When Taekyo reached the park, Yamato asked where Suna was as they always hung around each other. She told him that they will have enough leftovers for him to give to Suna. She asked Taekyo when his birthday was. He told her that it was at the time of winter vacation on January 1st. His friends always used to come and wish him even on the vacations. He asked Yamato about her birthday, which was on June 15th, barely 10 days away from today. Taekyo got excited and asked Yamato how she wanted to celebrate her birthday and what she wanted. She brushed off saying she didn't want anything except wanting him to spend all of his time that day with her. Taekyo told her I love you in his mind for the hundredth time now and said yes. He immediately went to Suna's house to tell him about this. He told him about Yamato's birthday and how she only wanted him to spend all of his time with her. He asked Suna for advice on how to spend her birthday and Suna agreed to help. On his way home, Taekyo got to know that his 40-year-old mother was pregnant and he was going to be a big brother in January. He asked his mother not to hold heavy stuff, but his mother replied that she had lifted a pregnant lady while she was in labor with him proving that genetics is real. Next day, they met with Yamato and told her the news of him being a big brother soon. They were munching on her delicious treats as usual. Suna took his leave early again saying he has something to do. Yamato noticed that something was unusual with Suna's behavior nowadays. She told Takio that maybe he felt lonely because they didn't get to spend much time with each other. She asked Takio to spend her birthday with him. Takio asked if it was okay to invite him and Yamato happily agreed, causing Takio to be happy too. He told Suna to come and celebrate Yamato's birthday with them. He asked what was the reason for his sudden invite. Takio told him that he was being distant and feeling lonely and asked if anything was wrong. But Suna told him nothing was wrong, he just had other plans that day. Takio waited for him to say what was going on in his mind. They sat together to discuss Takio's planning to celebrate Yamato's birthday. Suna gave him advice based on their past endeavors, which reminded him of funny accidents of Takio. He laughed after being reminded of them and asked Takio what he was planning on gifting Yamato. Takio had totally forgotten about a gift and on top of that, he had no money. So with Suna's advice, he decided to take on a part-time job to collect money for her gift. Next morning, he woke up and saw that Suna had already organized everything for him. He thanked him in his mind for being such a great friend. Suna once again left early from school saying he had something to do. Takio asked if anything was wrong but he said everything was alright with him. He told Yamato about Suna and told her that they would be spending her birthday without Suna this time. Yamato was happy knowing he wasn't lonely. He took up a part-time job and asked Suna to come with him and choose a gift for her. He agreed and they went to the store together. They chose on a gift and Suna worked his charms to make sure the gift stays on hold until Takio gets his pay. Takio got home and got to know from his mother that Suna's father was hospitalized and will have a surgery soon. Takio went running to Suna and asked about his father's surgery. He said that it was on June 15th. Takio was sure of being with Suna that day. He decided to not celebrate Yamato's birthday, but Suna told him that Takio being with him would not make him feel good. He just wanted them to spend the birthday together. 
Takeya respected his wish and told him that you will have a nice birthday with her and asked him not to worry as everything would turn out great. Suna was also having the same dream from his childhood where he was sitting in the swing all sad because his father was in the hospital. He woke up after the alarm rang. Takeya was waiting for him outside the building complex and thought even though he knew Suna's birthday and what brand of underwear he wears, he still doesn't know many things about him. He kept thinking about Suna when Suna came out of the building. He asked what time the surgery was. Suma answered it was at 2 o'clock. He told Tekio to give his regards to Yamato. Tekio gave him a fist bump and thought to himself that he will celebrate a good birthday with Yamato as per Suna's wish. He went on his way to meet Yamato. She was super excited to spend the day Takio. Tekio wished her a happy birthday which made her happier than ever. Takio took out his plan chart for the day made by Suna and him. Yamato wanted to see it but Tekio told her that it was a surprise and Suna helped him plan the day for them. He took her to the bowling alley first and had a lot of fun. He juggled and balanced bowling balls on his head to make Yamato more impressed. A group of guys was also impressed seeing his tricks along with Yamato. They took a picture together and he next took her to a famous cafe restaurant. Takeo was talking about how Suna had helped him. Yamato asked why the ever popular Suna didn't have a girlfriend. He just found them troubling, said Takeo. Yamato was happy because Takeo didn't have any girlfriend despite being so cool as she had the chance to date him. The staff came with a birthday cake and wished her a happy birthday. They told her to make a wish and she loudly wished to spend every one of her birthdays with Takeo, making him blush red. They were taking a walk in the park and Yamato wanted to hold hands with him. He told her that it was Suna who gave him the idea to let the staff know about her birthday planning to give a surprise to her. She asked him where Suna was. He handed her the plan they had made and gave her tickets to the planetarium. He asked her to go there with her friend and enjoy the day. Tekio told her that Suna's father was in the hospital, and he had a surgery going on right now. He had to go to Suna. Yamato told him that it was such an important matter and he should have told her earlier. Suna needed him right now as she told him to run fast as there was still some time. She assured him that she will enjoy her birthday. Tekio gave her the gift he had picked and ran like Usain Bolt is his disciple. He went to the hospital and found Suna all alone. Suna told him that he was an idiot, leaving his first girlfriend alone on her birthday. But Suna gradually opened up and told him about the day his father had collapsed. His father always had a weak heart, so he pampered his children a lot. Suna blamed himself for reaching home late that day. His mother and sister were away on a trip which left him all alone. Takeo assured him saying nobody blames him along with him and the surgery will go well. The doctor came out and Takeo shaked him so much to get an answer that the poor doctor puked his life out. But the news was great as the surgery was successful. Suna's mother and sister were also there and told Suma to go rest because they were here now. Suna and Takeo found Yamato sitting making cranes to congratulate Suna. She told them she couldn't stop thinking about them and came here. She told them that it was her best birthday ever. Suna found their interactions cute and said it was good. This made them desperate to find him a girlfriend like Takeo which didn't sit well with him. They bid Yamato farewell and went to their usual butt pine tree. Suma talked about his dislike of sunset, but he came to like them after meeting Takio knowing about his voluptuous appetite for the setting sun. They went home with a light heart after gazing at the sunset. Yamato and Takio headed up into the mountains for a picnic to make up for her birthday. Yamato had packed some bento boxes and plenty of goodies for their outing. Being the gentleman he is, Takio carried her bag. However, this time he hadn't checked with Suna before planning the picnic, and it turned out to be a hike. But Yamato was enjoying the time with Takio nonetheless. They reached the summit for their picnic spot, but when Yamato was brushing off her jacket, an eagle swooped in and tried to snatch it. Luckily, the jacket had the pin Takio had given her, so Yamato fought to keep it. In the process, she got dangerously close to falling off a cliff, but Takio came to the rescue. Although he saved her from any injuries, they both ended up tumbling off the cliff. Thankfully, Takio's sturdy build meant he wasn't hurt. Unfortunately, they found themselves lost. Takeo climbed a tree like a gorilla to scout the area and found the road, but it would take the whole day to get there. Forced to spend the night together, Yamato blushed with excitement. Determined to protect her, Takeo started their journey after a delicious meal prepared by Yamato. Back at home, Takeo's father asked his mother about him. Since she didn't know he was with his girlfriend, she assumed he was with his usual companion, Suna, who was actually enjoying a lazy day reading books. Meanwhile, Yamato's friends gathered for a get-together, discussing Yamato's adventurous picnic with her manly boyfriend. At night, Takeo fashioned a bush bed for Yamato, and after dinner, he shielded her from mosquitoes. Suddenly, a wild boar charged at them. But Takeo, being a judo champion, effortlessly lifted and tossed the boar away. He assured Yamato he would protect her, and their ensuing hub deepened her blush. 
Unaware of their situation, Yamato's mother called her friends to inquire about her, but they lied, claiming she was having an overnight stay with him. Similarly, Tekio's father asked his mother about him, but she remained indifferent, confident he would eventually come home. Suna, still immersed in his books, decided to call it a night. In the mountains, Tekio suggested Yamato lie down with him to gaze at the stars. As they drifted off, Tekio woke up to find Yamato sleeping, filling him with joy. They eventually made it to the road and caught a bus home. Yamato, upon seeing her friend's message, decided to visit her friend's house. Meanwhile, Tekio returned home to find his effortlessly cool mother. Yamato shared the day's events with her friends and sent a message to Tekio expressing her enjoyment. Overwhelmed with emotions, Tekio sought out his sleeping Suna to help him convey his intense feelings to Yamato using emoticons. Seeing the struggle, Suna informed him that expressing such feelings through emoticons wasn't feasible and assisted him in sending a heartfelt message instead. It was the middle of the spring. Takio and Yamato were going strong as ever in their cute relationship along with their cupid Suna. They met at the park as usual and went to see a movie together with Suna. Yamato and Takio were taking extra care about Suna's likes and dislikes. They took him to see the mountains and asked him frequently if he was having fun. They decided to rest a bit. Suna sat down. Suddenly, Tekio and Yamato came with a cake to surprise Suna on his birthday. Suna's reaction was not very anticipated as he himself had forgotten about his birthday. He didn't know what to feel so Tekio just told him to be happy. Suna was happy to see his friend caring for him so much. Tekio gave him a blanket as a gift because he gets cold easily. They went to the Macho coffee shop where Tekio works part-time. After taking their order, Tekio went to work. Suddenly, a guy came to their table and started talking about Takio Gauda, who was a very famous part-timer here. He thought Suna was Takio and told him that he is better than him. Takio intervened at the moment thinking the guy was harassing Suna and told him that he was Takio Goda. Seeing him in all his tall, broad, and muscular glory took a toll on the poor guy's heart. Suna's sister Eka barged in the coffee shop. She told them that this guy was in her university and his name was Oda Hayato. She took the annoying guy with her and dragged him outside. Oda actually came to pursue Eika as he liked her. He knew that Eika liked Taikyo, so he came to see what type of guy she had fallen in love with. But he couldn't believe that Taikyo the gorilla is the person she liked. He asked her if the girl sitting at the table was his girlfriend. She told him that yes, Yamato was his girlfriend and they had a happy relationship. They looked great with each other, and she had moved on. She took him back to the station to send him back. At home, Suna asked if she sent off the guy. She told him that Oda had left and asked if Taikyo working in the coffee shop bothered Yamato. Suna told her that Yamato was excited enough. Aika turned her sip mode on for Takio and Suna thought that nothing had changed. Takio was at home when he saw a brochure about M.M. Land and called Yamato to ask if she liked it. Hearing that she liked M.M. Land, he proposed to go together. But she said no to his proposal. He sensed something wrong with her and went to get help from Suna. Aika was also in the room and heard about his dilemma. She told him that she would ask Yamato like the previous time and set a time to meet together. I directly asked Yamato if she wanted to go to M.M. Land together with Tekio, but she still didn't want to go. Tekio asked for the reason behind her saying no, but she couldn't give him a proper answer. Oda made a surprise entrance in their meeting. Tekio apologized to him as he behaved roughly with Eika's friend. He told them that he was not her friend and he actually loved her. But he had been rejected because Eika already had someone she's in unrequited love with. Tekio became angry on hearing this, but Oda told him that I had a girlfriend. Aika threatened him not to disclose her secret. He asked Yamato if the reason she didn't want to go with Takio there was because of the jinx that makes people break up. Yamato agreed with him and told them she did not want anything to go wrong with their relationship. Oda proposed to go together with everyone causing the jinx of the date to fail. He decided to organize everything and took everybody's number. Suna asked her why she told him about liking Takio, but she had told him under hypnosis. Takio saw Oda sitting on the bench all alone and he told him that he didn't have any place to stay at night. Taikyo took him to his house and everybody welcomed him casually. At night, he told Taikyo that he truly loved Eika, but she was slipping from his hands. In the morning, Suna and Eika saw Oda getting out of Taikyo's house. Oda told Eika that he will make a chance to get Taikyo and her alone so that she can tell him about her feelings and truly move on. Eika was shocked to hear about his plans. She told him that she has moved on and was happy for Taikyo and Yamato. She did not plan on confessing ever to Taikyo and went away. They all were going together to the M.M. land. After reaching there, Oda was working simultaneously on his plans to make sure that Takio and Eika can get alone, but Eika was also marking sure that he does not get to do what he wanted to. They were getting on rides and enjoying themselves. Oda was working his plans continuously, but it didn't seem to work due to Eika's interruption. Oda took Takio with him to get snacks for the group and they talked about Eika. 
Oda told him that he cannot get a chance with Eika if she does move on and confess her feelings to the guy she loves. Otherwise, she wouldn't get the closure she needs and he would never have a chance with her. Tekio asked him if the guy she likes likes her back and they both get together then what would happen to him. He told him that he would just be happy for her and guessed it had to work that way for her to be truly happy. Takio was impressed with Oda. They got back together after buying the snacks. Aika asked him if he had told the truth to Takio, but he told her that he will stop trying to make her confess to him as he had understood it would not work. He spilled food on Aika's dress and she went to the washroom. Oda told Yamato and Suna to buy some popcorn with him and made Takio sit in the spot as a landmark. Aika came back and saw that Takio was alone. She got a message from Oda saying that she can confess and move on now, but Eiko was hellbent on her idea and took Takio to find them. Oda had already planned everything and had taken Yamato's phone. He also had taken off the charger too. Takio's phone so that they can't contact. He kept telling Aika to tell about her true feelings to Takio. Takio had always been dense. If she didn't tell Takio her feelings, then he would keep treating her like a big sister forever. They kept their search on for Yamato and the rest of the group. Oda kept fending them off by giving them false locations. Oda felt sorry for doing this to Yamato, who was excited to watch the parade together with Takio, but he had to do it to give Aiko the closure she needs. Aiko asked Takio if he remembered about the time he had called her like a flower, but Takio didn't remember what he had said, but he told her that she looks like the orchid flower that was in the park, which was the same flower from the past. Aika realized that Takio was still the same and thought of saying her true feelings, but at that time, an announcement was made that the parade will start after 30 minutes. Oda was on the search for them and found Takio and Aika in the middle of their conversation. Aika did not tell her feelings but asked Takio to go search for Yamato. Oda asked her if she told her feelings but Aika told him that she will never tell Takio about her love and plans on being the same sister figure in his life that he sees her as. Yamato found Aika and Oda and asked about Takio. Aika told her to go and find Tekio. She told her to forget all about her jinx and go do what she truly wants. They both finally found each other and watched the parade together. They were about to kiss but soon a ruined the moment. Finally their trip came to an end. Oda again crashed with Tekio at his home and talked about Aika. Next day, Oda told Aika that Tekio talked about her making her happy and Oda depressed. Tekio was trying to help a kid who had lost his shoe but watching him, a tall muscular anomaly coming at them running at full speed scared the bigesses out of them but at the end they apologized. Yamato told him that he was like the bear from an old fairy tale who tried to help a woman. Yamato didn't get why the woman didn't get the bear's good intention and like him but realized that if somebody liked Tekio, what would she do then? Tekio told her that she was misunderstanding his situation as he was not popular with girls at all. This calmed down Yamato a bit. At the school sports festival, Takio was selected as the anchor in the Swedish relay game. Takio had to practice with his friends for a time. One member of the relay team got injured and had to withdraw from the team, causing another girl to be added. The new girl Maria was slow as a turtle, but as you know, slow and steady wins the race, and in this case, Takio the Usain Bolt was in the team. Takio told Yamato about this, and she was excited to know that Takio was a great runner, unlike her. She wanted to meet Takio for a while after his practice, and the practice that day was cancelled because Maria had an upset stomach. They met up and talked about his upcoming relay race. Yamato was happy to know that Takio was a fast runner, but Takio found her very cute even if she is slow. But he couldn't find the courage to say to her that she was cute. After they said goodbye, Takio found Diarrhea Maria eating a huge snack. He asked if she was pretending but apologized right after. He was going back when Maria stopped him and asked if he was angry at her for being slow, but such things did not matter to him as he found them normal. He remembered Yamato's words and asked if she wanted to win. After knowing her answer, he decided to help her train. They trained hard with Takio chasing her causing her to run at a greater speed than before. Yamato was surprised to know that the race was code, but Takio once again reminded her that he was not popular. But as a die-hard lover of Takio, she couldn't let this go and asked her friends to help her choose something to give Takio and show off that they were together. The day of the race was here and Yamato sent her best wishes to Takio and after getting his usual Yamato full, he was ready to win the race. In the race, Maria Malaria fell down but seeing Takio's huge nostrils, she could feel the encouragement and got up. She handed him the baton and Takio did the rest by running and mauling down the spirit of his contenders he won. Yamato told Takio to come and meet her as he wanted to give him something. He went, and at the same time, Maria Gonorrhea came too. Takio introduced her to his girlfriend Yamato. Maria gave him a towel to thank him and went away. Yamato gave the gift to Takio, which was a matching keychain. Takio was happy to get matching chains with her. But Yamato was worried about her newfound threat, but she did not give up. 
Next day, Maria talked trash about his matching key rings, but Takio did not agree and went away. She ran behind Takio and slipped from the stairs, but Takio saved her in time. She wanted Takio to give him a piggyback ride despite Suna offering an outside the school him at Yamato. Takio hurriedly took Maria to her home and came back running to his only love Yamato, which made her happy. Next day, Maria told Takio to meet her at the chicken coop after school. Yamato was worried and went inside the school to search for Takio. She found him and Maria near the cope and heard them talking. Maria told Takio that she liked him as a person and wanted to call him master. She wished to learn from him. Takio gave her permission and went to Yamato who was relieved to hear that. She told him that she was worried about her having feelings for him. But Takio told her that he didn't need to be popular with other girls as long as he is popular with only her. Ending the episode on a sweet note. It is now fall and Takio has gained both a girlfriend and a disciple. He asked Maria what she wanted to learn from him. She told him that he was the master of heart. Even though he didn't understand anything, he just said, Okay, oh, Yamato told her friends about Maria and how she liked Takio only as a person. Her friends also liked him as a person and asked if they both wanted to go to Hakoda Uni together. Yamato messaged Takio saying if he wanted to go to Hakoda Uni's school festival with her. Maria was passing by and asked about it, so Takio, out of his good heart, also invited Maria to come. Maria said that she didn't want to ruin their date, but Takio asked Yamato, and she had already said yes to Maria coming with him. Next day, Takeo, Yamato, Suna, and Maria went to the school festival together. They enjoyed the food from the festival. Every time Yamato was blowing her food, Takeo kept thinking that she looked very cute and how he loved her very much. He and Suna went to bring stamps leaving Yamato and Maria alone. Yamato asked her what she liked about Takeo as she had heard a previous conversation with Takeo saying she liked him as a person. Maria told her that Takeo was very helpful to her and how he had waited for her when she had fallen down in the relay. She just liked his personality. She asked Yamato how she met Takio and who proposed first. Yamato told her about the groper incident where Takio saved her and got angry on her behalf. It was love at first sight for her and she proposed to him first. Takio and Yamato took a walk together hand in hand. Takio kept thinking about Yamato and her cuteness. He was in total bliss with Yamato and his relationship. But he didn't want Yamato to worry about him being famous with girls. Soon asked Maria about her feelings for Takio. She told him that his feelings were similar to his own feelings to Takio. But under Suna's scrutinizing gaze and questions, she couldn't keep real emotions bottled up and told him the truth that she indeed liked Takio as a man. She flimsily threatened Suna not to tell Takio and ran away. Maria couldn't live with the pressure of her feelings anymore. Suna confronted her and told her to tell the truth to him otherwise, she would hurt herself in the process. She decides to tell Takio and goes searching for him. She tells Takio that she likes him as a man and wants to be his girlfriend. Takio apologizes to her and says that he only has his eyes for Yamato. Takio went running to Yamato's school and told her everything. He told her sorry for letting her worry. He only loved her and there was no other girl for him. Yamato was happy to hear Takio's confession. Suna consoled a crying Maria who kept snotting away in her sorrow. Takio told Suna that he was worried about his relationship with Maria as he had hurt her, and he wanted his friendship with Maria to go on. He couldn't sleep the whole night worrying about that. Next day, Maria came to him with a smiling face and called her master. Takio was happy that Maria was casually behaving with him and Maria also looked happy to be friends with Takio, making both of them relieved. Takio was surprised to know that Kurihara had already kissed his girlfriend on the first day of dating. He felt that it was too early for a kiss. Kurihara asked what was the perfect timing for a kiss in his mind. He told him that the autumn of their third year is perfect, any other time beside this would be too early in his mind. Takio and Yamato meet up in their usual spot. Yamato was excited to celebrate Takio's birthday which was in the new year. She wanted to celebrate his birthday together and ask him if it was alright. Takio was all happy and eager to spend his birthday with Yamato. They decided to go to the shrine together on his birthday. Suna came home and saw his sister was there to spend the new year together with their family. Now comes the entry of Yamato who wanted to discuss her plans for Takio's birthday. She asked Aika about what type of cake she should bake for Takio's birthday. Suna gave her the idea to bake the cheesecake she had first baked for him. Yamato shared her concern with Aika that if she kissed Takio first would that be okay. They told her not to worry as Takio would be happy with anything as long as she is happy. She asked Suna if he had kissed a person before which reminded Suna about the terrifying incident with Takio. He got war flashbacks as he remembered the view of Takio's thick juicy lips and Aika told her that there was no way a girlfriendless Suna had ever kissed anyone. Only if she knew about the sacrifices Suna had made for their relationship. Yamato wished Takio happy birthday at midnight. Next day, they went to the shrine and prayed for each other's happiness and for them to stay together just like this. Yamato wanted to spend every birthday of Takio together. 
After visiting the shrine, they both went to Takeo's house. Both touched hands while cleaning, a moment was created which was brutally destroyed by Takeo's mom, but Yamato did not lose hope and prepared herself. But before anything could happen, Takeo's friends started making their entry to wish Takeo. After a long chat with his friends, finally they got out of his house, giving Yamato a chance. She gave his stuffed bear toy to Takeo as a birthday gift, and showed him the cake she had baked for him. Takeo was happy after receiving the cute gift from Yamato. Yamato told Takeo to make a wish and sang the happy birthday song for him with her not-so-great voice. But a lovesick fool and a deep person have many things in common, so Takeo liked her effort. He closed his eyes to make a wish and Yamato took the chance to plant her not-so-impressive lips on Takeo's well-endowed lips. Takeo did not react and Yamato realized that he did not even notice the kiss she had planted sneakily on him. She got all blushing while Takeo ravished the cake she had made. Takeo did not know that the ravishing part needed to be done elsewhere, but she was still happy to celebrate Takeo's birthday and bid him goodbye. Takeo went to Suna's house to wish him Happy New Year. He told him about their shrine visit along with the cake Yamato had made for him. He mentioned having a bug sit on his lips when he was making a wish which was strangely soft. He had not heard the bug flying and it suddenly went a wall. As always, the ever-knowing almighty Suna told the dense Takeo that it was a kiss from Yamato. Takeo remembered the blushing face of Yamato and went running to her house. He told Yamato sorry for not realizing before and asked for permission to kiss her all over again. After getting her permission, Takeo finally kissed her. After getting home, Takeo thanked Suna for his help and how it was because of his gallant sacrifice that he was able to make this kiss memorable for Yamato. It was midwinter. Takeo and Yamato were enjoying their usual routine of meeting in the park and having the sweets made by Yamato. Yamato had made a safe birth charm for Takeo's mother as she was close to her delivery. Takeo asked her to come home with him and give her the charm herself. His mother would be very happy to see her. When they got home, they saw his mother doing some pretty heavy cleaning. Takeo was worried about her getting injured, but she told him not to worry as she was fit as a whale. She welcomed Yamato at home and was getting out to do some heavyweight shopping. A very concerned Takeo took the bag out of her hands and went to the market himself. Takeo's mom and Yamato were talking and Yamato gave her gift to his mom and she was very happy. She told Yamato that Takeo and his father were a worry wart, always worrying and getting scared for her safety so she has to be strong in the midst of all their concern. For her, Takeo was still a child who would cry over his mother's wounds but did not flinch over getting himself hurt. Yamato assured her that Takeo was very caring and strong now, but a mother's heart still thought of him as a naive child. Yamato wished to be a strong mom just as she was Takeo came back with too many rice bags on his shoulder. He saw Yamato and his mother bonding over it and became happy. His mother thanked Yamato again for her gift and went back to work. Yamato got to know from Takeo's mother that he was born very big for a newborn baby and the nurses would gush over him and pick him up to showcase like the Lion King. She told Takeo that she was born as a premature child and was sick for a long time but now she was healthy. They both wished for his future brother and sister to be healthy too. Takeo's mom went to get her checkup when she met a fellow pregnant lady. She wished well for her and her child to be born safely. Yamato sent her childhood picture to Takeo which he found very cute and sent her his childhood photo too. Yamato found the big man child cute too. Takeo's mother was going out for a jog and both Takeo and his father wanted to go with her but she refused and went alone. Takeo's father told him how he had fallen for his mother's strong and uplifting personality. She always put others' safety before her own which made him fall for her and now they were a happy couple. Takeo's mother Yurika met with the same pregnant lady while jogging. The pregnant lady was about to fall from the stairs and Yurika saved her by taking her weight in herself. Takeo got home and saw his mother in pain. She told Takeo to call for a taxi. Takeo was very nervous and didn't know what to do. Soon it came to his help, called for a taxi and quickly took his mother to the hospital. She told Takeo that she had to be admitted into the hospital and she was fine. She told him to bring the necessary items and take care of the house. Takeo was all alone in the house and didn't know how to do anything. Suddenly, the doorbell rang and here came Yamato. Yamato and Suna both helped Takeo to cook, wash the laundry even if he put bleach at first and do the housework. Takeo's father told him that his mother was fine and asked him to visit her at the hospital after school. Takeo went to the hospital right after school. Yurika told him not to worry as she was fine and told him to bring some water. Takeo was tense as he couldn't help his mother in any way and kept thinking about her condition. Yamato came to support him and Takeo instantly felt better. Suna and Yamato both were here to meet Yurika. But after entering the room, they saw she was in labor. The other lady in the room was also in labor and Yurika asked her to take the wheelchair. Takeo carried his mother and took her to the delivery room while consoling her at the same time. She realized that Takeo had indeed grown up. 
She delivered safely and Takeo became a big brother to a healthy 4,300-pound sister. They watched the baby together. Takeo gave his blessing to Suna saying he can marry her even though Suna didn't want to. Everybody was happily satisfied with everything that had happened today. Takeo was talking with Yamato on the phone and told her the name they had selected for his little sister. The little bundle of muscle and joy was named Makito. Yamato was excited to hear the name they had chosen and asked if she was growing. But growing up is not a problem for the Gata family's kids, so there is no reason to ask. Takeo ended the phone call with Yamato. He started talking with sister about how it was the month of February, which means Valentine's Day is near. Which means it was the time to get chocolates from Yamato. Suna and Takeo were on their way to school when Takeo told him about Valentine's Day and how eager he was to get chocolates from Yamato. Takeo had never gotten chocolate from girls or the girls he liked. There was always some granny who used to give him chocolates. Suna was the one who used to get all the chocolates from girls since their childhood. Takeo was being weird in the street after thinking about Yamato giving him chocolates and decided to kiss her for the second time on Valentine's Day. Suna told him to calm down and assured him that Yamato must have planned something for Valentine's Day, so he told him not to put any pressure on her. But even while they were eating, Takeo couldn't help but think about the Valentine's Day ritual. He could only be more hopeful than he already was. Suna was trying to remind him to stay subtle, but a teenager heart can only be more chaotic. Nanako requested Yamato to help her make chocolates for her boyfriend and she agreed. Her other friends were alone on Valentine's Day, so she also invited them to come and make chocolates together. On the other hand, Takeo's friends were requesting him to make Yamato's friends come on Valentine's Day to spend the day together. They were single since birth and hadn't had the opportunity to have chocolate from anyone other than old grannies. Suna told Takeo to spend the day separately, but Takeo being considerate to his desperate friends asked Yamato and she also agreed. Now finally comes the day of Valentine. Suna being popular already had a locker filled with chocolates along with a heart-shaped box under his table. Takeo could barely hold his high as a kite hopes and all of them went to the cafe and they were celebrating Valentine's Inn. Yamato gave everyone the chocolates they had made together. Takeo kept hoping he would get some chocolates from Yamato. But the whole day passed happily with both of them enjoying it, but in the end he did not get any chocolates from her. He had wanted to drop her to her house, but she said no and went in a hurry. Takeo was out of his wits as to why he didn't get chocolates. He was very sad and kept thinking about Yamato. Suddenly, he realized that the group chocolates everybody got was also from Yamato, and he became happy but also sad that he did not get to savor that. He shouted at Suna, who was on the road, that he would get the premium chocolate Yamato liked for her. He opened the door to get to Suna, but found Yamato standing with a giant box in hands. It was the special chocolate she had made for him but got late because she couldn't find the proper box. Takeo got very happy and excited to get his first chocolate from the girl he liked. He gave her a flying kiss which made Yamato full of happiness. Next day, Maria gave complimentary chocolates to both Takeo and Suna. Suna said that the girls who liked Takeo were always nice. Takeo remembered that Suna always rejected girls because they talked about Takeo behind their backs which made him think that would certainly be a girl who would be good for Suna. We could see a girl standing with a blushing face and a flashback of the heart-shaped box which had the name of only Suna. Takeo and Yamato's cute relationship was going in a total blissful environment with Takeo having his first chocolate for Valentine to him giving her his handmade cookies on the white day. Yamato was very happy to have the cookies made by Takeo, even if they were as crispy as a rice cracker. He felt that watching your loved ones having something made by you was totally amazing. Yamato told him that's how she feels every time Takeo enjoys her sweets. Suma asked Takeo if Yamato liked the cookies he had made. Takeo thanked Suna for his help cause without him, we all know the cookies would have turned into stones. But it's the thought that counts. Takeo thought about Suna and how he should also have a companion. Suddenly, Takeo felt something and he told Suna to go ahead. Turns out a girl was spying on them while hiding. Seeing Takeo abruptly caused her to drop the letter she had brought with her and it fell in the river. After hearing from her that it was for Suna, Takeo jumped into the river and got the letter. It was written to Suna saying just to like her as she does not want anything else. Takeo remembered the time of elementary school's Valentine's Day where a same note was written without any signature to Suna along with chocolates. He asked her if she was the same girl from before who had been sending him letters all this time. Takeo apologized for his behavior. The girl just wanted to talk about Suna with Takeo. She introduced herself as a mama Yukika who used to study in the same kindergarten as them. Yukika was awkward as she didn't know how to talk to any man. So the first few moments passed with awkward silence and Takeo trying to figure out how to approach her. She finally started saying that she liked Suna for a very long time. Every boy she had seen from her childhood were very nasty and disgusting who played with bugs, were dirty and used to play with bugs. But Suna was very different from everyone. He always had a presence. 
He used to read books and was good with his behavior. She used to read the same books as him to try and understand his likes and dislikes. One day he took a hit with a volleyball in order to say Yukika. She had thanked him for taking the hurt for her and Suna being cool as always gave her a cool answer, which unintentionally made her fall in love with him. It was the last time she had talked to him and it had been 10 years since she had last talked to him. To her, he was perfect. Tekio told her that Suna was a pretty cool and normal guy. She couldn't talk to him properly, that's why she used to write anonymous letters to him all the time. She always follows them around to see Suna. She told him that Yamada was a very nice girl and she liked how they both were crazy about each other. She wanted that for herself but was too scared to chase after. She tried to give him the letter but couldn't muster up the courage. Tekio told her to be true to her feelings and he decided to help her. She asked Tekio to pretend getting lost and tell Suna that she helped her, causing the entry of her in his life smoothly. Suna seemed to remember her and this made Yukika blush. She blurted out that she loved him and wanted him to like her. After her word vomit, she ran away. Tekio confronted her and tell her to be courageous. She again confronted Suna and told him to know her more before giving her an answer. Suna agreed and exchanged numbers with her. Tekio didn't tell him about the volleyball incident and waited for Yukika to tell him herself, but the next few days she kept on avoiding and spying on them as usual. Tekio found her and took him to Suna, telling them to go home together. Suna went to board his train and bid her goodbye. Tekio went to Yukika to talk about her and Suna when Yamato called him. Tekio told Yamato everything and Yukika asked for her advice. They came to a conclusion that she should go somewhere with Suna. Suna had the letters from Yukika all this time hidden in his bookshelf. Tekio barged into Suna's room and asked if he had a message from Yukika. At that moment, he had a message from Yukika asking him out on a zoo trip along with Tekio and Yamato. He was ready for the trip. Tekio asked him if she really wanted to go as his feelings were important. Suna assured him that he wanted to and would give her the same reply, making Tekio happy for him. Finally, the day of the trip and Yukika had come all decked up for Suna. She froze at the sight of Suna, but with Tekio and Yamato's successful prompting, she managed to shout out something. Yukika kept avoiding Suna as she was nervous. She told Takio and Yamato about an incident from school where Suna had asked a question about giraffes. She knew the answer but couldn't muster up the courage to talk to him. So she wanted to create new memories in the zoo this time causing her to choose the zoo as an outing. They keep on seeing different animals like monkey which looked like Yukika and gorilla which looked like our Takio. But the progress between Yukika and Suna was not increasing. Takio told her to step up and create memories with Suna otherwise it would end up like elementary school once again. She went to Suna and told him that the card he was looking for wasn't there. She was happy to make some small talk with him. The zoo announced that a trivia game was about to happen. She asked Suna to come with her. She and Suna both made a pair of the game for which Suna held her hands for a while. This made Yukika fired up and she kept on giving the right answers and finally win the game. Suna praised her that she knew a lot of things to which she replied she likes to read books just like him. The trip came to an end with Yukika being satisfied with small talk they had made throughout the day because it's such small things that can make a person happier than ever. Next day, Tekio saw Suna and Yukika talking. After seeing Yukika was crying, he asked what was wrong. She replied that Suna was kind that's why he smiled at her and even went on a trip. He does not dislike her, but he doesn't like her either. They feel different emotions towards each other rendering her heart broken. She thanked Takio and told him to thank Suna on her behalf. She went away saying she regretted telling about her feelings to Suna, Suna, and Tekio. Were on their way when Yamato came running after reading a message saying thank you for your help, let's not meet again for some time from Yukika. Tekio told her and Suna everything to which Suna said it's okay and went to the bookstore. After some days, Tekio finally got hold of Yukika and chased after her and called Yamato to come. She hid inside the ladies' washroom. Tekio told her that she was brave and amazing for confessing her feelings in such a way to Suna, hearing such words from Takio. Yukika felt good and at that moment Suna called her to meet. She went to meet him. Suna gave her a gift for all the chocolates she had given him and apologized to her. She thanked him for his kindness and asked if they could be on friendly terms. Suna agreed and Yukika came running to Takio and Yamato. She told them about everything and how she had made memories with each one of them. She didn't regret it and was happy for the opportunity. She hoped that Suna would find a better girl than her and wished in happiness. Yamada joined a part-time job at a pastry shop after getting Takio's support to do something she likes. Takio comes every day along with Suna and hides to see if Yamato is fine or if she was getting bullied in any way. Yamato was enjoying her new job, getting to see a patisserie making beautiful cakes and pastries. A young patisserie named Ichinos was the right-hand man of the owner who was great at his work. After the owner told him to look after the new part-timer, he saw Yamato's work and told her that she needs to be fast while packing a cake along with changing her way of saying welcome which he finds weird. 
Yamato came with a crestfallen face to meet Takio, who became worried after seeing her like that. But Yamato came out of her slump and said that she will work hard to be good. The workers also told her not to pay attention to Ikino's as he is peculiar like that. After work, Yamato saw some new pastry in the pantry and got excited thinking it was a new item to be sold tomorrow. Turns out it was made by Ichinos, but he won't sell them as he did not like it even one of his pastries got left behind getting unsold. Yamato tasted the cake and told him that it was amazing. She offered to buy the unsold cakes and promised to hype his cakes up. Ichinos got happy and delusional that Yamato thinks of him as awesome and has feelings for him. Takio was on his regular duty to check stealthily if Yamato was alright and saw Ichinos calling her by her first name. This made an impact on his confidence as he didn't even call Yamato by her first name. He felt that he was being narrow-minded, but Suna told him that it was normal as a man not liking if there are other men with their girlfriend. He told him to focus on calling Yamato by her first name. Yamato told Takeo to come to her workplace as she was now adapted to work. Takeo along with Suna went and bought a cake from her. Ichinos saw that and asked Yamato if they were her friends. She told him that Takeo was her boyfriend. Ichinos ran behind them and told Takeo to break up with Yamato as he has more things in common with Yamato and he would be the best man for her. Takeo refused, but Ichinos said that he would make Yamato see that he is the best man for her and make her break up with Takeo as he needs her. Takeo became sad, but Suna told him not to think about that and focus on Yamato. Suna's sister Eka was at home and Suna told her about Takeo's situation. They talk about how Takeo was less concerned about his feelings and always put others' feelings over his. It was raining heavily and Takeo went running with an umbrella to pick up Yamato. Before Takeo could reach her, Ikinos gave a ride to Yamato and told her to participate in a competition in order to help him win. Yamato agreed and on the way, Takeo saw Yamato and Ikinos going in his car. Takeo saw the scene and went home with a heavy heart. Seeing him all drenched and sulking made Suna scared but he told Suna he was fine. He thought that it was for Yamato's better to go with Ichinos because his cheap umbrella wouldn't have protected her from the rain. He got a call from Yamato who told her that she thought she had seen him in town, but Takeo didn't tell her that he had indeed gone there for her and told her that it was just her delusion. She asked him out to hang out on her free day and Takeo became happy again. At work, Ichinos asked Yamato to help him prepare on the same day as their outing. Yamato was hesitant to answer but he told her that his career was at stake, so she called Takeo and told him about it. Takeo agreed because he had a good heart and thought that Ichinos' career was more important than their outing. Yamato helped Ichinos who was hellbent on making her his one and only muse. Takeo went out with his friends on that day but he kept missing her. He told his friends that Main Yamato was with him because she didn't find another guy. He thought that she should be with a better guy than him but his friends reprimanded him saying Yamato knows what she is doing and there was nothing wrong with their relationship. Takeo felt energetic after hearing this and he went to meet Ichinos. He told him that he can't give Yamato to him as he loves her. After declaring it, he came back and kept thinking about Yamato and this whole situation. He thought that Ikinos would make a move on her while they were alone so he went with Suna to guard her. Ichinos saw him and told him that he wouldn't make a move on her but tell his feelings to her after winning the gold medal. Takio, being a soft bear, wished him good luck and said he trusted him. He truly wanted him to win the medal regardless of this love triangle. Ichinos told Yamato that she was his muse and he wanted her to come to the competition tomorrow. Yamato agreed and the next day she went to Takio's house because she was feeling nervous. She did not know what Ichinos meant when he said she was his muse. Takio told that her being with him helps him make cakes so she was his muse in that way. That calmed her down and she went with a happy heart. Suna and Takio went to a beach. Suna had fun seeing Takio like a normal man but he also calmed him down in his own way. At the competition, Ichinos had forgotten to bring his equipments and didn't know what to do. Yamato called Takio and he went running full speed to bring his equipment. Ichinos couldn't believe that Takio was helping him but Takio came in time with his equipment and wished him good luck. He thought that Takio was a good man but he couldn't give up Yamato. He gave her the gold medal and told Yamato to be his one and only muse asking her out. But Yamato told her that she can't be his muse as her heart only belongs to Takio. She told him that he could win only because of his talent not that she was there but she would be glad to help him in the future. Yamato asked Takio if he knew all this. He said yes, and Yamato felt that he had to go through all that alone. Takeo held her and said thanks for liking him because he can't lose her as he finally called her by her first name. This ends the anime with a new year filled with love and new beginnings of their life.